they got a really good coffee here in Portugal, eh? Oh. We just got out of our hotel room, it's about 7.30 in the morning. We had a decent sleep last night, we haven't had good sleep since we've been on tour really. But we're about to go to Alicante, Spain, and we've got a couple of events on there for the next two days. So we're looking forward to meeting all the activists there. This bread has been freshly baked, it's still warm. Delicious. Where is it, dude? They are hurting them. Look at their feathers. They See how I'm getting the trouble out. You will pay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I don't understand. Yes. I love pigeons, eh? They're beautiful animals, but they get, um, because people look, because there's so many of them, like, people just look at them like they're nothing. They have that species' mindset, they think that pigeons matter less than other birds, you know. They've got a pretty hard pigeons, man. Survival mode all the time, eh? There's a fire inside your heart. Let it light up the world. Okay, so we just uh, landed in Alicante, Spain, and um, we had a f our flight was delayed by four hours. Uh, I've actually got a workshop, so we're going to the workshop, and then we've got to get up at 3 a.m. for a vigil here. We've got people waiting for me to do a speech. This workshop here is called Fearless Activism. This is directed uh, mainly uh, for people who are already vegan. You saying that he, he worked he, near a slaughterhouse? Uh, yes, near a slaughterhouse. But, yeah. Uh, making a co construction, a building. Buildings. Building. And you and heard what happened to yeah, the animals yeah. there, and it turned all day, you. All day. And it made you go vegan. Yeah. Yes. That crazy. make him uh, become vegan because uh, the, the the screen of the animals stay in the. In you my, can hear the screams yeah. of the animals from yeah. the slaughterhouse. Oh my yeah. god. It's terrible. Wow. Yeah. Um, will you be attending the vigil tonight? Tonight? Is it in the morning? Yeah. In the morning. 4am? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll be there. Definitely. Who will be attending the vigil? <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking about it, just do it. How are you feeling? I feel sick. I woke up this morning feeling really sick. We got a... I only went to bed at like, I only went to sleep probably about 12.30 a.m. I woke up at about 3.30, about three hours sleep. Yeah, I guess we are in the back of an RV. We just tried to drink enough coffee to make ourselves feel normal. I don't think it worked, eh? Carne means meat. That's on over there. It's starting to stink. So when you know you're at a slaughterhouse, it stinks. People eat out of these places, man. It smell like animals, waste, and blood and death. Hey everyone. Hello. Has any trucks been? <laughs> any trucks ever been? No. Well, we're not actually late because no trucks have arrived yet, so. Let's go for a walk around here. The bins will be filled with body parts. Um, I'm actually glad I've got a blocked nose so I don't have to smell too much of that disgusting smell. Oh, One of the most horrible things is animals waiting to be killed. Especially when they're waiting in a slaughterhouse because they can usually hear each other. You can hear someone, hear someone in there, gates opening. 
Do you want to go in there? Yeah. Someone over here. It's like the holding pens back here. Come on, Abdullah. A few little goats in there. Waiting to be killed. Any of them who you spoke to, Adnan? Does that look like the guy you spoke to? No. He's ready to start killing. That guy come out with his white um, gown on. The kill floor's just over there. You can hear a cow calling out. So the workers have just arrived. That you know, that when the workers arrive, that's when the killing starts. I don't like those sounds, eh? What's he doing? Calling us dogs? Yeah. What I find really disturbing is that they're whistling to the animals like they're their friends. <laughs> to lead them onto the kill floor to butcher them. You can hear them hosing down. When you hear the hose, they're usually spraying blood off the floor. So I think the killing started. And they come out inside of a morgue truck, get delivered to someone's house to be eaten, delivered to the store. You know he's got an animal in the back? Nah, there's no one in there. There's no one in there. There's something out of a horror movie, eh? Hey? Whistling. Whistling to them like they're children or something into, and then luring them. Oh my God. Just luring them onto the kill floor, man. A young goat is actually called a kid. They sound like kids too when they're yelling out. <laughs> I feel so sick sitting, standing out the front of here in the cold and like I've got this flu, but in comparison to what they're about to face, it's absolutely nothing. Oh my god. So young man. Hey. They are only little babies, oh my god. I'm so scared, eh? I can't believe they're gonna murder them, eh? This one here. So terrified.
For coming, I know it's very early in the morning. It's uh, tough to come standing out in front of slaughterhouses and stuff, so it's really good that you're all here. Okay. Um, I'm proud of you all for coming and standing out here. Thank you. Okay. This could possibly be the farm where they come from, eh? Wow, look at them. So many of them all going to be butchered. It's just crazy to see this whole farm full of slaves that are going to be butchered. It's crazy what we do, eh? Breed them, keep them in these places, take them to slaughterhouses. This guy's got his, his kid with him too. They're so, look, they're such big animals, but they're so scared. They're really, they're really gentle and shy, these animals. It's, they're just really cautious of me, they don't know. Hello. They're ear tagged, like slaves. They'll be murdered. This is what I mean about treating sentient animals like products. When you look inside of their eyes, you can see there's someone inside of there, you know? Farmers just look at them as products, pieces of meat to be hacked up into steak and sold to people. They're like big puppy dogs, really. Out of turn, oh, out of place, oh, such a waste of things I wish I could say, but it's fragile. Things we have, oh, holding back. But I can't, not today. This is a fruit trees, see? Fruit trees, no one has to be, no sentient being has to be murdered for fruit. Over there you got 5,000 bulls and cows, so living sentient animals. And here you've got fruit. Which one's more, the, which one's the moral choice? Fruit or slavery? So I don't think I think this is some type of sustainable activism. Whether you promote welfareism or veganism, they're not ready to change either way. At least with me, they get a clear message. With you, you're sending a very confusing message. Why do you reckon they feel so attacked? Man? The slaughterhouse workers feel attacked just by our presence. So they can yell, they were yelling us stuff out at us before calling us dogs in Spanish. Um, I think they feel like maybe some, it's something personal against them, but it really isn't. We just want to be here to bear witness for the animals. And we understand that these jobs are only available because of consumer demand. It's not their choice of job. It's, people work the best jobs they have available too. And this is the best job they have available. Um, do I think it's a moral job? No. Do I think it's their fault that they that this that the world offers jobs like sick jobs like this to people it's not their fault 